Today in Thunkable, we're going to learn about if statements and loops, and we're going to do that by creating a timer app, a simple timer app like you'd have on your phone that counts down a certain number of seconds and then an alarm goes off. So let's create a new app here in Thunkable. I'm going to call it timer and I'm going to put it under the just testing category and I'll make sure not to check the tryout the drag and drop interface and say create. So what do we need to create our timer app? Well, we need a label where we can count down the number of seconds in our timer. We need a text box where the person can type in the number of minutes they want the timer to be counting down for. And we're going to need a button to push to start our timer. So I'm going to drag all those things onto the screen. The other thing we're going to need is an alert, something that pops up to let us know the timer is done. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an alert component, drag it on the screen, and it's another one of those invisible components, ones that we can't um, see up here on the screen, but instead will appear down here in the bottom when it's all set up. Okay, so let's change the order of things here. Uh, I would like my label to be at the top, so I'll drag it up. I'm going to click on it and change its properties. Let's make the text big maybe 30, maybe 40. And let's move it further up top. I'm going to do that just by increasing the bottom margin. That's going to push it away from the other things. Let's get our text input and drag it up as well. We'll click it and change its hint to say, enter minutes for the timer. And then we'll go ahead and Maybe give it some space, add a little bottom margin there, and maybe 20. And then our button, let's change our button to say, go. All right, so let's write the code to make this all work. I'm going to go under blocks. We want this whole thing to start when we push our go button. So I'll go into our button one drawer, and I'll say, when button one is clicked, what do we want to do? Well, we want to set up our timer and have it go. We're going to need to convert the number of minutes typed in the minute box into seconds that count down. So we're going to do that with a variable. I'm going to click here on variables and initialize a variable. We'll just call it timer seconds. And it will be set initially to zero. So I'll just go ahead and grab my zero block and drag and drop it there. Now, before we start, it's possible for someone to enter anything they want into this timer box. They could come in here and they could write, you know, anything they want. They could put a negative number. And uh, so we need to use an if statement to do some error checking to make sure that our users aren't trying to break our app. So under control, you can see there's an if do else statement. We're going to grab that and plug it here. So we want to check to make sure that whatever has been put in our text input is a number greater than zero. So I've got my text input text here. I'll just drag it over here for a minute. I'm going to go under logic and we're going to say, use our greater than statement. So we want to check to make sure that our text inputs text is a number greater than zero. If it is, then we can go ahead and run our program. Otherwise, uh, we want it to not run and have the user input the correct type of information. So we'll change our um, text inputs hint to be please enter. Oh, let's get rid of the word please. It might not hit enter number greater than zero. Let's test this out to make sure it works. Go back to design, hit preview. I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, 3 and push go, and it should do nothing. I'm going to try negative 1 and push go, and you know what? I'm going to come back to blocks, and instead of cha changing our hint, we want to change the text to say enter number greater than 0. I thought it was going to change, but it, we need to change the text. Okay, so let's go back to design and just test that again. Uh, minus three, two, go, enter number greater than zero. Let's try putting zero itself. That shouldn't work either. 
enter number greater than zero, let's put pi. That should also throw the error. Enter number greater than zero. Let's try five, and we're good. Okay, it works. So there's our error checking. So we're using our if statement to do some error checking to make sure the user's not trying to break our app. Now let's make our, um, all the timer stuff happen in here. So what do we want to do? Well, first we want to take the number of minutes that have been entered by our user and transform it into seconds. So I'll go ahead and grab my variable there and I'll set my variable seconds or timer seconds to We'll go to math, we need to multiply by 60, and we need to multiply the text inputs text, which is where the person has put the number of minutes they want the timer to run for. And of course there's 60 seconds in a minute. Okay, now that we've multiplied our number of minutes in our text input by 60 to get the number of seconds the timer needs to run for, we can actually start counting down. So let's go into control again, and there are a few different loop types that we could use to do this. We can have something that repeats forever. Well, that's not going to work in this case. We could have something that repeats a certain number of times, and that could certainly work. We could count down uh, the number of seconds. So if, if we have 60 seconds, we could go ahead and repeat 60 times by putting, instead of 60 in here, we'd put our variable timer seconds, and it would repeat as many times as seconds we have. We could also use this loop, which counts from a certain number to another number, so we can count up from zero to the number of seconds. And what else could we do? We, well, we could have it count down as well. Uh, so let's go ahead. I think we're going to use this repeat number of times loop. That's the one that maybe makes it the most sense for this. So I'll drop that here. How many times do we need it to repeat? Well, if it's a one minute timer, 60 seconds, if it's a two minute timer, 120 times, but we don't need to know. We just have our app variable. We've just calculated how many times it needs to run. So we're going to go ahead and grab app variable timer seconds and drop that in there. That's the exact number of times we need our loop to run. So what is it going to do every time through the loop? The first thing it's going to do is update the label. So we're going to set the labels text to be the number of seconds we have left. If I go into variables, I'll grab that variable timer seconds, drop that there. So it'll update that number on the screen. Then what do we need to do? Well, we need to wait one second. Then we need to do some math. We need to subtract one from our timer variable. And so under variables, we have a change app variable timer seconds by and we're going to change it by negative one meaning it'll subtract one from timer seconds and then it'll repeat so this every time through this loop it sets the label to whatever number of seconds we have left it waits one second and then it subtracts one from the seconds and then it does it again once this is repeated as many number of times as seconds the loop will end and what do we want to do after that? Well, we're going to use our alert and we can call, um, let's change the text in our alert, set our message to timer done and alert call show. There we go. And it'll show the alert. Let's test it out. I'm going to go here and design, go to preview, enter number of minutes for our timer. Let's do a one minute timer and push go. And it's counting down. The timer is almost up. I can hardly wait. Five, four, three, two. And we get our alert. Timer done, and we can say confirm. And then start the fun again. Anyway, that's how you use loops, and that's how you use conditions, and that's how you can create a simple timer. And I wanted to show you we could achieve the same thing without even using a variable, but instead using a different type of loop. So let's do that. I'm gonna pick up 
Um, we're going to leave our check, but I'm going to pick up this whole piece and take it out for a minute. If we go under control, and if we wanted to, we could use a count with the loop instead. I'm going to grab that, and I'll show you how that could work. So the way a count with loop works is in this example here, here it's saying, okay, we have um, a counter, which is called a variable named i, and it counts from 1 to 10. And every time through the loop, it would count up by 1. So the first time i would equal 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And after that, it would exit the loop. Instead of counting or up to 10, we could also count down. So we could count from, um, we could just do some quick math here and we could say we want it to count from, and I'll grab this part here. We'll say we want it to start at text inputs text times 60. That's the number of seconds we want. So we're going to start at that number and we want it to count down to zero. And every time through the loop, we want it to change by minus one. Okay. So instead of counting from 1 to 10, we're counting from, let's say, 60 seconds or 120 seconds to 0. And every time through the loop, it's changing by negative 1. So what do we want to do there? Well, we don't need to all, um, we don't need this piece of code anymore. Let's throw that away. Every time through the loop, though, we still want to set our label text to not the number of seconds anymore. Instead, we want to change it to I. How do I get I? I guess it's under variables. Yeah, there it is, I. And then we want to wait one second. In the previous loop, we also then had to do the subtraction from the variable. We don't have to do that because it's built into our loop. So every time through the loop, it subtracts a second. So we don't need this anymore either. So maybe we're writing some code that's slightly more efficient here. So I'll throw away this loop. And now what do we want to do? Well, after the loop runs, it's the same. We need this alert that says timer's done. And also, we don't need this variable anymore. This should still work, I think. Well, let's test it. Go back to design, preview, one minute, go. And it works just the same. So this is just to show you that you can write code that is different, but functionally works exactly the same. There are different ways to write code to accomplish the same thing. And this is a count loop instead of a repeat loop. But this code does the same thing as the previous code does.